Hey guys, Crazy G Man here. Today in this video, I'm going to take you on the new Enigma Cold War server that just started up here within the last week, I believe. This is a little bit different from the usual Cold War server that I go on, Alpen Wolf's 1947 to 1991 server, which I've been playing on for a number of years now. Um, Alpenwolf's Cold War server, I would say, is still my favorite, though I do think this server here has a lot of potential. If any of you guys fly IL-2 and have flown on the Finnish server, that's basically kind of the idea that Enigma seems to have been going with, uh, as he even says himself. And for a server that's as young as it is, right now it's got a very high player base at all times, which has always been something that Cold War has lacked in the North American evening time zone so for myself uh, who is busy generally most days uh, during the daylight hours it's nice to have something available in the evening though of course on the weekends I do still plan to fly on Alpha Wolf's server I do like uh, the missions that he designs and kind of the challenging targets one thing that Enigma server does offer is it is a bit of a nice stepping off point if you're new to DCS, if you're new to the Cold War, plane and helicopter sets, and you want something that's relatively user-friendly to get into, and easy to get into, um, this server definitely allows you to find ground targets very easily, because there's a moving front line that will change depending how well your side does at various different iterations. So as soon as you pass that front line, you'll know that all the targets on that side of the line are an enemy, you don't have to worry about IFFing, and usually they're in fairly obvious places. They don't move as far as I know, I don't think you can get into uh, a JTAC or a tactical commander and then order units around. They do change as uh, the front line does change though. So here I'm just sneaking in an MI24 RP behind, just trying to stay as close to treetop level as I can, so I don't get spotted more or less trying to blend in with the trees and become as hard to observe even if they're getting radar call outs for me they're gonna have a hard time finding me and we and you know hopefully my side is also engaging them with fighters so I do see here some targets ahead of me I'm just double checking making sure that there's no other targets I didn't see off to my side that could potentially engage me before I get in range of these targets but it looks like I can begin my attack so fire off a missile, start to climb a little bit, give it a bit of collective just so I can clear those D treetops, and give Petrofec a nice line of sight to the target. Of course, I'm going for the AA first, so that I can make my job a bit easier. It looks like I hit, but it turns out I missed there, but regardless, I break off the attack, and I immediately try to get as low as I can to get out of view, so that anybody that might be searching for me is going to have a hard time picking me up in the ground clutter. So, yeah, here I get as l super low. I actually get lower than I wanted to. I practically scrape my paint on the ground. But just adding a tiny bit of collective, not too rapidly, just slowly pull out of it. And the advantage is, being this low, probably no one's going to see me now. I am on the white background. If I was over the trees, you could argue I would blend in a little bit better, which is why I'm kind of like keeping this attack run. If you see me doing the follow-up attacks, I more or less use these trees as kind of a background to hide myself from potentially anyone that might be trying to engage me. This does mean that I am doing a right-hand turn as opposed to a left-hand turn. The hind likes doing left-hand turns more than it does right, as you'll know if you've flown it a little bit. But with some practice uh, and some patience, it's not that hard to do. So getting ready for my second shot. Now unfortunately I don't see any smoke so it looks like I did miss my first target which is unfortunate but can't let that get you down. Generally I'm at a fairly high closing speed. You can slow it down to basically 150 to 200 if you want to try to attack two targets at once. But right now I'm feeling speed and leaving my skull exposed for as little as possible is probably the better option. So I get a nice hit there. Again just rinse and repeat duck down, you can see a fighter getting killed over there, so at least know that there's currently a fight that's happening there, and as long as there's a fight happening there, 
my side is probably uh, keeping them occupied and keeping them off of me, which I'm more than happy for. So on the server there are basically a variety of frontline targets and then there are two sets of uh, depots or industrial targets that remain static throughout the entire mission that are worth more. You do have to travel further into enemy lines to get to them, but they are worth a lot more and will help you uh, move the front line by killing less targets if you decide to go and take the risk and potentially of engaging them so it's a nice little feature and again very similar to the finished server in IL2. So here I am again now this might seem kind of boring it's a little bit more exciting for me just because I am constantly paranoid and realize that every single time I do this I might get interrupted and have to essentially fight for my life or hide. Generally speaking even though I've used terms to kill fighters on the server it's not of course what the Heinz really made to do the Heinz made to attack ground targets can it shoot at planes? yeah but doing so you have to maneuver in a way that makes you very vulnerable and it's not really recommended so if you can you know break away from engagement and hide and then move off and then come back and recommit that's usually a better option uh, in the long run so right now I'm just being patient and probably I should mix up my firing line. Like I said, I do like kind of the terrain that's behind me obscuring me. So I'm kind of, you know, here I'm like deciding maybe I'll switch it up, but I don't really see anything that I really like in terms of like terrain that can maybe hide me and it just gets me closer to the open uh, flatter ground, which gives me less hiding places, quite frankly. So I'm just going to stick with what's so far working and will hopefully continue to work, but we'll see. And as you can see, I'm not really going too fast. I'm only going 150 to about 200 kbh. This is actually a pretty good attack speed for the hind. You don't need to be like running in at like 250 kbh or 300 kbh. Um, usually just staying at this speed is more than sufficient to properly engage targets, but also give yourself enough movement and momentum that if you do need to move quickly, you can add a little bit of collective, drop your nose, and get relatively quick for a helicopter, that is, uh, in a fairly short period of time. That being said, the Hind is a heavy aircraft. It is still, you know, it is surprisingly nimble if you're used to it. I feel basically, mm, you know, I don't know. I've also flown the Black Shark, and the Black Shark is definitely a different plane. I'm not sure how the new Apache is going to be when that gets released in a few months' time from now, but we'll see when that happens. Anyway, I'm going to try to attack two targets this time. So I'm just basically, I'm still going a bit fast. I'm going over 200 kph. Probably slow it down a little bit. But that does require raising the nose. Generally, if you're kind of in line with the target, you're generally going to be kind of speeding up in the hind. So here I'm kind of probably just staying kind of constant speed, probably something like 210, 225 kph. So I've got one with that shot, lining up with the second shot. And rifle. And just, you know, as long as you keep your course steady, it doesn't have to stay directly on the target. Usually that's more than enough. Petrovic will do the rest. He is actually, I feel this targeting has gotten a bit better, uh, and the server has actually kind of taught me how to better target planes when you do have to with them. That being said, it does take a lot of time to engage targets uh, in the air, just because you have to wait for the gyros to align or warm up or whatever it is they do before you can actually move the site. So that time delay is very crucial and really makes engaging air targets with your <laughs> anti-tank missiles, even the uh, Atticas, which have the air-to-air -air variant, it's not exactly the best situation. The Atticas do also help uh, with engaging at, at longer ranges, especially against IR SAMs, and if you want to get two shots off and get 
a good chance of successful hits, they do have a longer engagement range and fly a little bit faster. So that helps a lot in terms of like being able to actually potentially, you know, to take out more than one target per attack run. So here's something fires at me, and I have no idea what it is. Uh, even now, I turned off my attack view for this run because I found out that attack view, if you have it on in the Enigma server, um, will drastically reduce your frame rates. Um, your actual, I found my CPU and my GPU were only working at like half capacity. My GPU is only running at like 50 or 60 percent. My CPU is also doing that. And then I turned off attack view, and then I got more regular numbers. You can see my FPS is kind of in the high 50s, low 60s, mid 60s on average, which is what I generally get in the caucuses when I'm really low in the MI24. So I still don't know what shot at me. I'm a little bit nervous. Um, I'm trying to think what it has red tracers, but regardless, I see now an A10 coming head on me, and I switched to cannons as quickly as I can, but I didn't manage to drop the nose enough, and so now I'm in a dogfight with a warthog. Now, not an ideal situation for the hind to be in a dogfight with any fixed wing aircraft, quite frankly. And for the A10, because the A10 moves so slowly, generally you can kind of stay in your area, it doesn't have to extend very, very far, it can turn very tightly for a fixed wing aircraft. And so it's very hard to try to <laughs> lose him. Now I lost sight of him there and I was I heard him like sneaking up behind me, so I managed to fly erratically, pulling up the cyclic drastically far just to try to get a pot shot. I don't know if I tagged him there or not. I don't think so. But regardless, even if I did, he, he seems unhurt by it. So now we're just basically circling in. So he's turning tight like an A-10 can at low speed, but he's not a helicopter. So whatever he can turn, I can stay on the inside for days. And I'm actually going to line up a nice shot here, but of course he flies right into the sun. And I take the shot anyway, just to see if I can get lucky, but no joy. So now he's extending, and I'm like, oh, this is my chance. Except for as soon as he extends a little bit, he starts to initiate a turn. Now, if you're going to hit a plane with the Sturm missiles, they really need to be basically flying straight, or kind of flying gradually uh, in a turn. I have shot down, like I say, a number of planes, including F-5, a couple of A-10s, and a Viggen, but... You know, it's luck mostly. But anyway, I fire one off, and he fires a uh, aim nine at me right here. But it's a P version, and I think it goes off underneath me. I heard it, didn't really feel it too much, but then I re didn't realize later that he actually blew off one of my stub wings. Uh, so now I have no more missiles that I could fire at him. He's disabled my missile system. So you'll see that here as I lock him up, and I'm trying. You know, right now he's extending, he's not turning anymore, so this is great. This is the actual time where the missile might hit. And I target him. A-10s are listed as propeller aircraft for some reason, probably because they're so slow. So I'm going fire, 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 nothing. The missile system is damaged, and I'm going to have to do this the hard way. Actually, now that he dips below the hill, I'm, gonna, I'm trying to think if I can maybe lose him in the trees here and then get out of here but because he moves so slowly he's it's unlikely for him to accidentally uh, fly out of the engagement zone so I have to kind of stick with it and keep him within my field of view so I really try to pull lead there try to get a shot but it doesn't work out and he extends again and right now I'm really getting tired of this fight hopefully you know I've feel he's going to kind of try to do another missile shot and I can see right now he's extended enough to try to get his nose around so I've really got to take a shot here, do what I can and I want to take a shot before he gets his nose fully around so I start firing tag him there with his engine and then hit him he does fire his gun and hits me a little bit but the MI-24 <laughs> soldier's on um, it is a great plane, it can take punishment not that I really try to make it take punishment, I like to bring my aircraft back undamaged because ultimately damaged aircraft have to sit and get repaired and are out of service. A lot of times aircraft like the Hind or A-10, even if they get damaged, generally they're not fighting, they're limping their way back. Those systems are just there as redundancies. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this little flight. Uh, I definitely think you guys should check out 
both Alpine World's Cold War server and Enigma's Cold War server if you have some time. And I hope you guys have a good day then. Take it easy. Bye-bye.